Hi friends! Welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is the start of my February vlog style book haul where I also track my TBR stats as I'm trying to read down my TBR throughout the year. So in this clip I'm going to go over where my stats were as of the beginning of February and then at the end of the month we will revisit them and see what progress I made. Keep in mind that the one I'm most concerned about is my physical TBR because they actually take up space as opposed to digital items. At the beginning of the year I had 187 books on my audio TBR. As of the beginning of February I had 183 which is down 4 from the beginning of the year. Ebooks went from 65 to 64, so down one from the beginning of the year, and physical books went from 455 to 449, which is down six from the beginning of the year. Feeling really good about that. I don't know how many books are gonna come in this month or how many I'll get read, but the goal is to try to see those numbers continue to drop down. It's only the second day of the month, but I do have one book that I've gotten because I went to a book event the other night, and this is for Come and Get It by Kylie Reed. I have read this. I had an advanced copy, and I loved it. It's more literary fiction, but entertaining and very messy, set on a college campus and talking about power dynamics and money and class in ways that are really interesting and engaging. And I loved it. One of my favorite things that I've read so far that, well, one of my favorite books in January, and I got it signed. So yeah, that was really cool. Kylie Reed is the author of Such a Fun Age, so I also took my copy of that to get signed, and it was really fun. So one book added to my shelves, but again, it is one that I have already read, so that is not adding to my TBR. I will be back when I have more to share. Guess what was in the mailroom? Four packages from publishers. So let's go ahead and open them up. First, we have something from Disney. I think I know what this is. I was reached out to by somebody about a book that I already had on my radar from an author that I have enjoyed books for, that I've enjoyed in the past. I'm very excited. So, yes! Okay, this is It Waits in the Forest by Sarah Das. I'm really excited. I really loved her debut novel, and she has a book coming out with Disney that is YA kind of horror, a supernatural thriller from Rick Riordan Presents, drawing on the darkest depths of Caribbean mythology, a sinister tale of magic, murder, and the evil that lurks within us all. Yeah, so this comes out near the end of May, and I'm very excited to check it out. Thank you so much to Disney. That's exciting. I've got two packages from Holiday House and Peachtree Publishing. I do know I've got, oh, that is like open. Okay, um, I do know I've got a few books for review coming from them. Oh yeah, okay. All right, so these are some middle grade books that look great. We have The Luminous Life of Lucy Landry by Anna Rose Johnson. I read another book that they published by her and really liked it. This one comes out March 24th and it's historical fiction by an indigenous author with an indigenous main character. Selena Lucy Landry, named her a ship as every sailor's child should be, has been frightened of the water ever since she lost her father at sea. But with no one else to care for her, she's sent to foster with the Martins, a large Anishinaabe Bay family living in a lighthouse in the middle of stormy Lake Superior. Life at the lighthouse is challenging. Ships come and go, waves pound the rocks, but it has one major advantage. It's near the site of a famous shipwreck that went down with a priceless ruby necklace that her father wanted more than anything. If Lucy can find it, won't it be like having Papa back again just a little bit? But someone else is hunting for the treasure too. And as the lighthouse company becomes increasingly skeptical that the Martins can juggle Lucy and their duties, Lucy and the Martin children will need to find the necklace quickly or they may not have a home at all. So yeah, we have a Native American heroine, historical fiction, and this one is shorter than the first one, which I think my only real complaint of the first one was it was a, a tad long, so I'm guessing this might be better. But I loved her writing. It reminded me a lot of Anne of Green Gables, so if that sounds appealing to you, go check that out. Again, that's out in March. Then I had to request this because my I, I have a kid who's going to be so into this. This is The Table Titans Club by Scott Kurtz. It is a middle grade graphic novel coming out also March 24th about a middle school Dungeons and Dragons Club. Growing Pains, Gameplay Adventure, and 20-Sided Dice abound in this new graphic novel series. So this sounds 
right up my kids alley especially my almost 10 year old is getting into playing dungeons and dragons with some of his friends and i feel like would be really into this so i was like oh this is great oh cool so yeah it's graphic novel because it's an advanced copy it's not in color but it looks like it's finished excited to check that out and then probably pass that along to him i think at the end of that and then finally i didn't realize these were all coming out on the same day <laughs> They're all, all March 24th, but we have another historical fiction. One Big Open Sky by Lisa Klein Ransom, another middle grade one that sounded really interesting. The wagon journey westward will lead them to a better life or cost them everything they have. Set in 1879, Mississippi follows a young girl named Letty who may have her head in the stars, but her body is on a covered wagon train. Nebraska gleams with promise, a chance for Letty's family to claim the independence they've strived for over generations on their very own plot of land but the road proves far more difficult and dangerous than they imagined. Will they truly be free when they get there? It says, tackling powerful themes of autonomy and Black self-emancipation, this chronicles a little-known part of American history, stories of Black homesteaders through the voices of three unforgettable women in this expansive intergenerational novel in verse sounds amazing. We have three middle grade books from Holiday House. Thank you to them for that. I'm guessing this is going to be one of the YA books I requested. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Sarah, the publicist over there who sends me these lists, and I'm like, hey, can I get this? And she's like, yes. So, yeah. I've been reading more middle grade since my kids are getting into it and they're the right age for it. Yes. Okay, this looked good. Take All of Us by Natalie Leaf. This comes out June 24th. So this is really interesting because it's a horror novel. Five years ago, a parasite poisoned the water of Ian's West Virginia town, turning those exposed into dark-eyed, oil-dripping shelves of their former selves. Used to hospitals and health scares, Ian still takes no chances. He relies on his best friend and secret love, Eric, to mercy kill any infected people they come across. At least until a new report about contamination triggers an evacuation and Ian cracks his head in the rush. He always thought he'd die young, but he wasn't planning on coming back. Much less, facing the slow, painful realization Eric may have left him alone to die. And it goes on from there. It says, perfect blend of teenage deadpan humor, longing, and raw fury. A smartly layered, terrifying read from an author who knows the genre and deconstructs it with precision, exploring how queer, disabled, and neurodivergent people are treated in times of emergencies. I think this sounds really interesting. It's so it's like a zombie horror novel, but kind of playing with queerness, neurodivergence, and disability, and how those things are not handled well a lot of times. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to reading it. Lastly, we have a package from Hachette. Not 100% sure what this is. It might be something from Orbit. I did request a couple of things, but I never know if I'm gonna get what I request. So let's see if it's an Orbit book, maybe? I don't know. Yes, it is from Orbit, okay. Which one is this? Oh, yay, this is so pretty. Look at this, oh my gosh. Oh, is that a finished copy? It is. Oh, wow. Thank you. This is Fathom Folk by Eliza Chan, and it is the first book in a new series, the Drawn World series, a thrilling, incisive fantasy of diaspora and dragons. It's a beautiful Southeast Asian influenced fantasy with razor sharp edges following a half siren. The reviews looked great. The cover looked amazing, and I did want to read it. So awesome. Thank you so much to Orbit. That's very exciting. Cool. Hello, I'm a little bit sick, but I have two publisher packages that arrived. This one is really big. It's from Macmillan and it feels like it probably has a couple of books in it, which I do think there might have been a book series that I agreed to try. So let's see if that's what this is. Oh, it's like taped, so this will not be as easy to open as usual. There we go. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Okay. So this is, this is a series. Hold on. Get them, both books. I'm not sure which one. Okay. This is probably the second one. Cool. So we have a paperback of First Light by Liz Karen. Vampires are given a brutal yet refreshing update in this addictive outing. Adapt or die. Oh no, this is not the first one. This is the new one. So this is the advanced copy of the book coming out in April. And then we have a hardcover of the first one. So Night's Edge. Cool. Night's Edge and First Light. They sounded interesting. 
Um, having a mom like Izzy meant Mia had to grow up fast. No extracurriculars, no inviting friends over, and definitely no dating. The most important rule, tell no one of Izzy's hunger, the one only blood can satisfy. But Mia is in her 20s now and longs for a life of her own, one where she doesn't have to worry about anyone discovering their terrible secret or breathing down her neck. When Mia meets rebellious musician Jade, she dares to hope she's found a way to leave her home and her mom behind. It just might be Mia's only chance of getting out alive. This is a sun-drenched novel about the darkest secrets we hide and how monstrous we can be to the ones we love most. So really interesting take on vampires and toxic family relationships. It sounded good and the reviews seemed interesting. So thank you to Tor Nightfire for those. I will be putting them on the TBR. And again, book two is coming out in April. This one is from Penguin Random House. I'm wondering if it's an arc from Penguin Teen because I know they had said something to me about maybe getting one. Let's see. I don't know. Yes, that is in fact what it is. This is Every Time You Hear That Song by Jenna Voris. Uh, this goes on sale in April and it looks really cute. It's like a YA contemporary coming of age story that's also a queer romance and it just sounded good. They say never meet your idols but they never said anything about upending your life for a quest designed by one. 17 year old aspiring journalist Darren Purchase has been a lifelong fan of country music legend Declie Castle who's as famous for her classic hits as she is for her partnership with songwriter Mick, Mick and Lee Hooper. The same Mick and Lee who mysteriously backed out of the limelight at the height of their careers never to be heard of again. Now, Deckley's televised funeral marks the unveiling of her long-awaited time capsule, but when it's revealed to be empty, a long trail of scavenger hunt clues unfolds, leading to a whopping cash prize for whoever finds the real capsule. This sounds really interesting. Darren knows there's a story there, and she is going to be the one to break it, even if it means a spontaneous road trip with her co-worker, Kendall. Flashback to 1963, where a young runaway Deckley has her sights set on fame and glory. As she claws her way to the top over the years that follow, it's Mick and Lee's lyrics that help rocket her to stardom. But as their relationship evolves beyond the professional, it threatens everything Deckley has worked for. What else will she sacrifice to hold on to her dreams? Told on alternating perspectives, this is a queer coming-of-age story celebrating country music, complicated women, and living authentically. So... Yeah, sounds really cool. Thank you so much to Penguin Teen for sending that along. We have had a lot of book mail come in, uh, mostly publisher mail and a book of the month box. I also got just the broken packaging from the post office saying, we care. Were the books from the publisher in the package? No, just the package. So thank you, post office. <laughs> that was fun. Let's open my book of the month package. It is a bigger box than usual because I did complete the first level of the reading challenge last year and I skipped January. So I'm getting my prize in this month's box. They made the reading challenge a lot harder this year. I think they don't wanna have to give out as many prizes. I'm annoyed, but oh well. Okay. And my prize is a little stuffed pig. There were like a couple animals you could choose from. It says book of the month and it's keychain. It's cute. I, I've got to say though, um, quality of the prize options and the cost of them has gone down. Like what's up book of the month? <laughs> it's fine. I mean, it's cute. Thank you. But, uh, I got socks once. I got a useful notepad once. This year, they just had little stuffed keychains, which I guess I will give this to my children. Um, and they're making it harder to even complete the challenge and get the prize. So, what's up? I don't know. Anyway, my complaints aside, I do have a couple of books to share. Alright, so one of these is an add-on. I hope I don't regret, but we'll, we'll see. But my book pick for the month was Heartless Hunter by Kristen Ciccarelli. I've got to say, I have read from Kristen Ciccarelli before and really enjoyed her books. I haven't heard much about this. The cover is really pretty. It is fantasy. I don't know if this one is... I think it's YA. Again, she usually writes YA fantasy. Enemies to Lovers doesn't get more high stakes than a witch and a witch hunter falling in love in a romantic fantasy. So romanticy with a witch and a witch hunter. It sounds like it could be really good. I've liked her writing in the past. In fact, I think her fa my favorite book that I have from her has a sapphic romance in it, so we'll see. 
that was my pick for the month. And then I was convinced by some of my patrons to give Divine Rivals a try. I'm gonna say I, I read the River Runs whatever book by Rebecca Ross and I didn't like it. I did not enjoy the book. I didn't like her writing style. And so I had been hesitant to pick this up even though people rave about it for the most part. But people who have read both and have semi-similar taste to me didn't like that one and liked this one. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna give it a try. So we'll see. If I hate it, I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm gonna try it. So those were my book of the month picks. Then I have three packages from Macmillan. One of them is huge and I'm a little worried about how the book has fared, but we'll see how this goes. Um, this is a lot for Macmillan. Getting a lot of book mail in February, my goodness. January was a much slower month. Okay. Okay, let me get scissors. I know some of you are concerned for my nails. My nails are not in great shape anyway. Ha ha. <laughs> I guess a box cutter would probably be a good choice. I do not have one. Oh, cool. Okay. So this is another Martha Wells reprint that they are doing. The Book of Illyrian, Illy Illyrian, The Element of Fire and the Death of the Necromancer by Martha Wells. So it's an updated and revised edition of two shorter books in one. Um, two novels that are both been revised and updated. I will say I am finally going and reading through City of Bone. I have the old audiobooks. I've listened along with part of it and read along. And it is updated in terms of removing things that are, you know, would not be considered kind of questionable, which I appreciate. Like, I, I think the updated and revised, the things that are being updated and revised in these books, I think, are improving upon them. I don't really know what this is about. Um, the kingdom of Illyrian lies in peril, menaced by sorcerous threats and devious intrigue when Cade, bastard sister of King Roland, appears unexpectedly at court. The illegitimate daughter of the old king and the queen of air and darkness herself, Cade's true desires, are cloaked in mystery. It falls to Thomas Boniface, captain of the Queen's Guard, to keep the kingdom from harm, but is one man's steel enough to counter all the magic of Feyre? Interesting. Okay, cool. So it's a fantasy series. I think the cover is beautiful. Thank you, Tutor. Excited to have that. And when does this come out? This is... Oh, this is like a finished copy. Okay, it's like... It's very floppy. This, this is, it, I, I didn't realize it was a finished copy because it's, it's extremely floppy for a finished copy, but, um, it's two books in one, so it is long. Oh, that's probably why it's floppy is because it's got thin pages. It's like 730 something pages. So two in one there. Let's open the next one. There we go. Oh, yay! Okay, cool. So this is Running Close to the Wind by Alexandria Rowland. This goes on sale in June. I really loved their first book with Tor, and this one sounded really fun. For fans of Our Flag Means Death, discover low fantasy on the high seas in Running Close to the Wind. Queer pirate rom-com fantasy, which I'm, I'm here for. Avra Havaki, former field agent of the Rasti Ministry of Intelligence, has accidentally stolen the single most expensive secret in the world, and the only place to flee with a secret that big is the open sea. To find a buyer with deep enough pockets, must ask for help from his on-again, off-again ex, the pirate captain Taveri Az Hafar. They are far from happy to see him, but together they hatch a plan, take the information to the isolated pirate republic of the Isles of Lost Souls. Then there's like Brother Julian, a mysterious member of the crew with an inconvenient vow of celibacy. <laughs> I mean, it sounds fun. It sounds fun. It goes on sale in June. Thank you to Tor.com again for that. And then lastly, we have what feels like a novella. This one is quite thin. So let's see what we have here. Oh, cool. Okay, so this is a finished copy of a novella that I read digitally, The Butcher of the Forest by Premi Mohammed. I loved this. I think I gave it five stars, four and a half, four and a half stars at least. It's this novella that's like horror meets dark fairy tale where a woman has to go into a 
forest, a very dangerous magical forest to try to save the king's children. It's creepy and great and I loved it. I think her writing is beautiful. I definitely would recommend. So thank you so much to Tor.com. I'm happy to have a finished copy of this. It's a quick read. It's really good. Hey y'all, we've got book mail to open. I've got, what, what do I have? A couple pieces of publisher mail and an order from Pango Books. Why don't we start with that? I recently purchased a few things, mostly using store credit from selling other stuff. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is another installment in a manga series I'm reading. Pretty sure that's what this is. Yes, that is is what this is. I like to keep an eye out and see when there are inexpensive volumes of this because they're kind of pricey if you buy them all full price. But this is Yona of the Dawn, volume 30. If you've been watching, you know I've been reading these and collecting them. I really love them. They are political fantasy romance manga. And uh, yeah, I like I'm not anywhere near volume 30 yet, but I will have it on my shelf for when it is time. So collecting them when they pop up. I've got a package from Macmillan. So this is probably from Tor. Let's see what we have. Oh, did I know about this? Yeah, I think I think I said yes to this. Foul Days by Genevieve de Mova. The scariest monsters are the human shaped ones. This one goes on sale in June. Oh yes, this sounded really cool. The Witcher meets Naomi Novik in this fast-paced fantasy rooted in Slavic folklore from an assured new voice. Yeah, this sounded really interesting. I'm excited to check it out, so thank you to Tor. Love it. Then we have something from Hachette. I don't know what this is, so let's see. Oh, yay! Oh, that's exciting. Okay. I love this. Um, y'all, yeah. it's a finished copy of That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. Amazing. I love this. I think it's hilarious. Thank you so much to Orbit. So I read this back when it was indie published. It's now gotten public it's now gotten picked up for traditional publication. This whole series is hilarious. The Mead Mishap series. They're kind of these tongue-in-cheek fantasy romances and it's, it's just, it's great. Sweet, steamy, and funny as hell. Yes, I mean, that, that is 100% it. All she wanted to do was live her life in peace, maybe get a cat, expand the family spice farm, really anything that didn't involve going on an adventure where an orc might rip off her face. But they say the goddess has favorites, and if so, Sin is clearly not one of them. After Sin, in a wine-drunk stupor, saves the demon Fallon, he reveals that all he really wants to do is kill an evil witch enslaving his people. And who can blame him? But now he's dragging Cinnamon along for the ride, whether she likes it or not. On the bright side, at least he keeps burning off his shirt. <laughs> it's really funny. I love these and uh, this is so exciting. So yeah, awesome. Thank you to Orbit. This was, this was great. Hello, we have a bunch more book mail. I feel like after January being a light mail month, this has been a very heavy one. I've got a pre-order from Barnes & Noble, I've got an order from Pingo Books, and I've got two pieces of publisher mail. So let's start with my Barnes & Noble order. Pretty sure this is the latest Olivia Dade book. Yes. Woo! There it is! At First Spite, the first book in the Harlot's Bay series. I love Olivia Day. She does great contemporary rom-coms with fat characters, and I just, I really enjoy her stuff. When Athena Graydon's fiance ends their engagement, she has no choice but to move into the Spite house she recklessly bought him as a wedding gift, which is a problem for several reasons. The house, originally built as a brick middle finger to the neighbors, is only 10 feet wide. Her ex's home is literally attached to hers. And Dr. Matthew Vine, the freaking third, aka the uptight judgy jerk who convinced his younger brother Johnny to leave her, is living on her other side, only a four foot alley away. So then I think she ends up with the brother, which should be interesting. So very excited for that. Pre-ordered that one from Barnes & Noble. Then we have an order from Pango Books. This one was partly credit and partly something I paid for. I've been wanting to read it and then my patrons picked it as a book they want me to read in the next couple months. So I picked up a copy. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, 
how cute. Oh, this is so nice. There's like a little note and the packaging. This is adorable. Yay! All right. So this is Monstrilio by Gerardo Samano Cordova. It is a horror novel that I've heard really great things about it, although I know it's intense. After her son Santiago dies, Magos carves out a piece of his lung to save herself. Acting on the force of maternal instinct and the dubious logic of an old folktale, she nurtures the lung until it gains sentience, growing into the carnivorous little monstrilio she keeps hidden within the walls of her decaying childhood home in Mexico City. Uh, and it kind of goes from there. So it's about grief and love, but I, I hear people really have been fans of it. So yeah, excited to read that in the next couple months. It's in great condition too for used copy. Love it. Then we've got a couple packages from Macmillan. So let's see what they sent us. We've been getting a lot from them this month. My gosh, all the books. All right, let's see. Oh, yay. Okay, cool. This is a finished copy. I was actually, I've been meaning, I'm meaning to read this this month. Remedial Magic by Melissa Marr. This looked so cute. I know it's like a queer fantasy romance. So we have a librarian who likes baking and investigating the mysterious. And there's nothing more mysterious and captivating than the intriguingly beautiful two properly dressed women suddenly sipping tea in her library. The pull between them is undeniable and Ellie is not sure that she wants to resist. Prospero, a powerful witch from the magical land of Crenshaw, is often accused of being ruthless in her goals and ambitions, but she is driven to save her dying homeland and a prophecy tells her that Ellie is the key. I am very excited about this. It sounds great. Um, this is from Bramble, their new sci-fi fantasy romance line from Tor. So thank you so much for the finished copy. Love that. This goes on sale February 20th, if you're interested. And we have another one. Let's see what this one is. This one does not want to open. Oh, wait, wait. Here we go. Okay, this is very exciting. The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst. This might be my favorite cover this year. I mean, look at the beautiful coziness. I'm so excited. And I've really enjoyed what I've read from Sarah Beth Durst, so I, I had to have this one. This is the Cottagecore Romance of Your Dreams, a cozy fantasy full of stolen spell books, unexpected friendships, sweet jams, and even sweeter love. Join Keela the librarian and her assistant Kaz, the sentient spider plant, as they navigate the low stakes market of illegal spell making and the high risk business of starting over. I'm so excited for this. Uh, when does this go on sale? <sighs> Doesn't say. When are you publishing? July. July. So this goes on sale in July. Thank you to Bramble again. Very excited. It's a great lineup. Hey y'all, I have three packages to open today. I've got publisher mail, a gift, and a Pango Books order to open. And this is probably going to be one of the last clips of the video, which is fine because we've had a lot, a lot come in. So let's start with my Pango Books order. This is not going to be a huge surprise. I used some credit to buy yet another volume of the manga series that I'm working on collecting. As I see them come available, this is volume 26 of Yona of the Dawn. One day I will have all of them, but when they're on sale on Pingo Books, I snap them up when I can. This is a gift that arrived right before I left on vacation, so I did peek at it, but I wanted to share it here. This is so sweet. So a Galentine's Day gift from a patron. This is Vision in White by Nora Roberts, book one in the Bride Quartet, which I've heard really good things about and it's been on my wish list for a while. So thank you, Esty. She said, Happy Galentine's Day. This is one of my favorite Nora series and a comfort reread. I hope you enjoy from Esty at Big Reader Girl on Instagram. Thank you. I'm so excited to have that. That's really nice of you. This was one that this is one of her romances I've heard really good things about. So I'm excited to have that. Yay. And then I had this gorgeous box arrive from Hachette. I think it's from Orbit. Your TBR pile just got sweeter. I think I know what this is and I'm excited. Y'all know I'm a fan of cozy fantasy. So 
All right, what a nice PR box. It's really pretty. The Honey Witch of Innisfree Can Never Find True Love. I love this cover. Oh, cute. It's like a whole little box set up. Oh, this is amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, this is really cute. Okay. So we have a letter from the author and she said she pitches this book as Howl's Moving Castle meets Jane Austen. Love that. There are magical forest creatures, lots of descriptions of decadent food, and a sapphic grumpy sunshine romance that have me kicking my feet and giggling at my desk as I wrote it. Thank you for reading. I hope you enjoy it. And she says there are 13 Taylor Swift references hidden in the book because I couldn't help myself. That's cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm very excited about this. Yo, oh, this is so nice. Okay, so we have so many things in here. A little bee tattoo. Very cute. Assigned book plates. Always love that. A beautiful bookmark. Love comes as swift as the sting of a bee and as sweet as honey. That's really pretty. Just, just like a little card. Oh, plant me. Oh, cute. So this is like, it's like a card with seeds in it. So you can like plant the card. That's cool. Lift your hands, breathe deep, visualize their growth and release your magic. That's so fun. Yeah, I've heard of these. So I think there's like seeds embedded in the paper so you can plant it. That's cute. That's cool. If only I didn't live in Manhattan and had a garden. <laughs> but I'll see what I can do with that. And then finally, before we get to the book, we've got Earl Grey tea. There may be other kinds of tea people get, but I do love an Earl Grey. And a, an adorable little jar of honey. And a honey stick with a bee charm. Like, how cute! This is adorable. And they have a little Honey Witch sticker. This is a really lovely package. And then of course we have the book, The Honey Witch, coming out in May of 2024 from Sydney J. Shields. The honey witch of Innisfree can never find true love. That is her curse to bear. But when a young woman who doesn't believe in magic arrives on the island, sparks fly in this deliciously sweet debut novel of magic, hope, and love overcoming all. I am so excited for this. This cover is everything. Sapphic cozy fantasy romance. Yes. And thank you so much to Orbit and Red Hook for sending me this amazing package because it's gorgeous. This is so cool. Um, I will have to do a little little thing on Instagram for it because that's really adorable. I love it. Um, anyway, wow, cool. Hello, I have more mail. <laughs> um, so I have a package from an author, which is very exciting. I think I'm going to save that for last. I have an Amazon order because I did buy something recently. And then I've got a couple of items from a publisher. So why don't we start with the book I bought. I will be reading this very soon if this is what I think it is. Yes. But to round out my collection of the series, I got Dragon Keeper by Robin Hobb, which was the only book in the series I didn't yet have. And I will be reading this in March. So it will not be on my TBR for long, but I wanted to have a physical copy. This is also very small for a Hobb book, only 500 pages. <laughs> Then I have two packages from HarperCollins. I am pretty sure these are both from Harlequin for an Instagram promotion that I'm doing for them. So let's see if I'm right. All right, yes. So we have A Little Kissing Between Friends by Chensia C. Higgins. I read her debut novel. I think it was her debut. Her, her first book by Harlequin anyway, and I really liked it. She writes queer contemporary romance. This one is going on sale May 28th. Triumphantly black, queer, and contemporary. Music producer on the rise, Sin the Star, knows what she likes from her sickening beats in the studio to the flirty femmes she fools around with. Her ever-rotating roster has never been a problem until her latest fling clashes with Juicy, her best friend, and the most popular dancer at strip club Sanity. It makes Sin see Juicy in a different light, one with far fewer boundaries and a lot more kissing. <laughs> so yeah, looks great. Sounds awesome. I will be doing a Instagram post for the book, so that's why I have that. And then this should be the other book from Harlequin. Yes! This is The 710 Split by Carmen Lee. Yet another sapphic contemporary romance for fans of Ashley Herring Blake's Delilah Green Doesn't Care, Love, and Shensia C. Higgins' Devon and Chris Plan a Wedding, 
also really enjoyed, comes an utterly charming and queerly irresistible romantic comedy where all's fair in love and bowling. So we have a teacher and a bowling pro and local celeb who is now teaching at the same school. They used to be best friends and rivals, then they kissed and split and nothing was the same. So kind of a second chance romance. Um, it sounds great. And when does this one? This one goes on sale May 21st. So thank you so much to Harlequin. Again, I will have Instagram posts coming for both of those, but they both sound great. Lastly, I have a package from an author I'm really excited about. The author very kindly reached out to me in email and is a viewer of the channel and I read her debut novel and really enjoyed it. And so she asked if I would be interested in reading her next one. And I was like, yes, sounds right up my alley. This is The Keens Project. Happily Ever After is Just Take a Little Planning by Jessica Para. So I don't even know what all is in here. She told me she was going to be sending me a book, but like this is a whole package. So I don't know what all's in here. Let's see. So it is a YA contemporary romance and coming of age story. Okay. Oh my god! Jessica! This is like a whole... Dude! Okay. Okay, so what I know about this from Remember, I don't remember all the details, but I remember that it has some degree of involvement in with the character liking Disneyland or something like that. And it looks like she sent some Disney stuff in here. This is, okay, this is wild. Um, so we have some Disney lollipops. My kids will be thrilled with those. We actually also just got back from a Disney World trip. So um, that's very exciting. Those are so cute. And ooh. I will have this caramel chocolate sea salt popcorn also from Disneyland. Oh my God, Jessica, this is amazing. Thank you. And then of course the book, which I'm really excited to read. Oh, and there's a little letter. Oh my gosh, this is so sweet. Okay. So the Keens Project coming out May of 2024. I don't have the exact date listed here. The Wedding Planner gets a YA makeover in this delightful and heartfelt novel from the author of Ruby Ramos' Recipe for Success, which was also really adorable. Castillo Torres, Student Body Association event chair and social planner, could use a fairy godmother. After a disastrous mishap at her sister's quinceanera and her mother's unexpected passing, all of Cass's plans are crumbling. So when a local lifestyle guru slash party planner opens up applications for the internship of her dreams, Cass sees it as the perfect opportunity to learn every trick in the book so that things never go wrong again. The only catch is she needs more party planning experience before she can apply. When she books a quinceanera for a teen Disneyland vlogger, this is where the Disneyland thing comes, Cass thinks her plan is taking off until she discovers that the party is just a publicity stunt and she begins catching feelings for the ch chambalan. I don't know what that means, so I'm going to learn. Okay, I looked it up, so I think the word is chambalane or chambalanes. These are like the the court of the quinceanera, the boys of the court. Courting role and part of the ceremony. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's interesting. I feel like I'm going to learn more about quinceaneras. I know a little bit about them, but not clearly not that much. So that's what that is. So she starts falling for this boy in the quinceanera that she's planning, I guess. I, th I think that's maybe what's going on. Her Agenda starts to go way off script. Kaz finds that real life may be more complicated than a fairy tale, but maybe happily ever afters aren't just for the movies. This sounds so cute and so fun. And as somebody who also really enjoys Disney, I'm excited for it. So thank you so much to Jessica for sending me this. So she sent, there's a letter from the author. Love that. Right. And so I guess this is one thing to know about it is that this is also a book that is dealing with loss and grief, which I think a lot of us have gone through, especially with the pandemic. Um, yeah, I am I'm very, very excited to read this. This is so cute. Look at the little sticker. This is the characters on the card. Oh my gosh. This is such a lovely package. I was not expecting all this. This is so sweet. Jessica, thank you so much. I really appreciate having the chance 
to read the book. It looks delightful. I'm excited to check it out. And that is gonna be it for this video because it is basically the end of the month. Tomorrow is the last day of the month. I am going to update you on my numbers. I have not added these books in yet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I've, I've read a reasonable amount, but my numbers are not great this month because so many books came in and I kind of got a lot of audiobooks on sale. Hold on. Should I add in these? I'm not going to add in the books I just unboxed because <laughs> it's already a lot. Um, okay, so at the beginning of the month, I had 183 books on my own audio TBR. That number has gone up significantly. Uh, it is now... 202, which is up 15 from the beginning of the year. So I don't know what happened. Well, I do. I, some of this is I had free audio review copies from Libra FM, which I'm appreciative of. I did not listen to all of those this month. I also purchased some things that were on sale, most of which I do have plans for, but it was kind of a lot. So, but again, as I always say, my biggest priority is not my digital TBR, it is my physical TBR. So even though the audiobooks have gone up, they will come back down. Kindle has stayed the same, 64 books on my Kindle TBR, which is down one from the beginning of the year. My physical TBR has actually gone down slightly, if we don't count the four books that just came onto it, which we're not going to. <laughs> So, um, so at the beginning of the month, I had 449 books on my physical TBR, which was down six from the beginning of the year. Now I have 448, which is down seven. If we put in the four books that just got added in, then we're down three from, <laughs> from the beginning of the year. So it could be worse, but um, I am hoping that March is gonna be a lot better. I was on vacation for a week this month where I wasn't reading as much as I normally would. We had an unusually high number of books coming in from publishers. So hopefully it'll all kind of even out, but we're at least kind of trending the right direction with my physical TBR and I'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do to increase that. So talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. For your question of the day, okay, just because it's on my mind, I'm thinking about these. I'm thinking about having just gotten back from Disney World. Have you ever been to Disney? Have you been to Disneyland, Disney World? Would you want to go? I know it is expensive. We were planning and saving for this Disney World trip for years. I did grow up though because I grew up around Southern California a lot and so I did grow up going to Disneyland where it was much less of an event but also prices have gone up. So it's a whole thing, but I still love it. And Star Wars land, oh my God, as a Star Wars fan, I just, it's it's wonderful. But um, go check out the Keens Project. Thank you, Jessica. Super appreciate it. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.